Hey guys, and how's it going? This is a friend of mine's bus, uh, Mike, otherwise known as the captain, by the little decal in the window there. This is a 71 VW bus that he's had for about 15 years, and I've probably been working on it for about 15 years. Did an engine on it at one point, a bunch of other work. And uh, other than needing paint, it's fairly nice and clean. California bus, I believe. Uh, it has one issue, and it's here to get that taken care of. Well, that and a couple little small ones. Pops out of fourth gear. So we are going to pull the engine, pull the trans. It has another transmission sitting in the box in the slider right now. That is a rebuild. We were going to try fixing what was in it, but I did not want to take the chance of it having an issue and having to do it all over again. So this is the last of my commitments that I've made to friends of working on their vehicles. Uh, and I've been putting it off for a while, so I want to get it knocked out and if we could turn the camera on you guys can hang out with me and we'll swap a transmission in a old VW bus All right, let's get set up and get into it All right, so this is a 1600 dual port What that means is uh, the cylinder heads have two ports going in instead of one It's the largest of the 1600s that came from the factory and I think it's the only year the bus got it Hey Mike you missing a screwdriver? <laughs> I don't know what that noise was, was he? I'm not going to show every little bit of removing stuff because it'll take the video just uh, much too long. But I'm going to go pop the air cleaner off, the rear tin out of the way, and we'll start getting into it and see what we do get to show. The main part of it is going to be, you know, doing the transmission and hopefully test drive afterwards. That one's already off. Makes a little elbow room. Took the bolts out of this rear pan. And a lot of times you take the rear bumper off and get a clear access straight in and out. This one has all the original stuff hooked up onto it. Not that we can't change it, but if we can work our way around it, I'd rather leave it. The other part is too is you know, taking a bumper on and off you really do a job beating up the paint on the side corners even if you tape it up. Mike thought he had a uh, muffler leak. This is the preheat this coming up right here from the muffler and it preheats the intake manifold. It's actually part of the intake manifold and it is rusted right off. The intake manifold is no good. Get up top pretty much all the wires and uh, hoses have been disconnected. There were still two bolts up there. They need to be undone. I'll show you what's going to go happen underneath. So it's got heater cables. These are heater boxes right here. These are heater cables. These need to be undone. These boots need to slide off. That's where the hot air goes up to the front. Two bolts on the bottom. Two nuts rather. One there and one there. He has a ripped CV joint. Boot. That boot's no good on that axle. That one's not looking very good neither. You may want to replace that. I already popped the one side off. Got a fuel line up here. Straight up there. I'm going to go pinch that with a pair of vice grips and unscrew that. Leave that disconnected. And this has what's called a mustache bar. This bar right here. I know it doesn't look like it, but it's supposed to look like a mustache. You can see where it curves up. Now you can kind of see it a little bit. And I've had mixed luck with these things. Sometimes you can just take the bolts out of the bottom and when you slide the whole assembly backwards, it's enough to clear. Other times I've left the thing off altogether and fudged with it and screwed around with it, getting it back in there. On a Beetle, this isn't on a Beetle. On a Beetle, it just hangs off the transmission. The engine hangs off the trans. But on a bus, they uh, support it back here. There's no, um, on a Beetle, it's supported right here with a cradle. And uh, 67 and bust down. I know, too much information. All right, see if we go wiggle this thing out. There's a jack holding the transmission up. 
And this is not doing anything. Trying to grab it around the oil strainer, and I have a, a cap made up on my jack that cradles it correctly, hopefully. I'm just going to try wiggling it forward. down as far as it can. Throttle cable is one thing you kind of want to watch out for. Although you have it removed, it has a tendency to want to hang up. That's out. And we have one wire going nowhere. Good. You should be all set. I'm going to spring the whole bus up. Train's just going to hang, but it should be okay. There's a little musical game back and forth. I'm just looking for high enough to clear the rear bumper with the fan shroud. Should be right about there. We got new clutch and stuff to put in it too. Alright, let's go underneath and see how things look. I believe we have a new seal. That one's shot. Big thing with VWs is you, you do not want the hot air that gets expelled out from under the engine coming back up to the cool air up above. So the seals going around are fairly important. And I do believe he has all new ones. Those are shot too. All right, the transmission. Got the two halves of the axles to come off. The starter, I'm just gonna unbolt and probably pull to the side. And we have Reverse lights. Get the jack out of the way. Your reverse light switch, ground strap, and there's a reverse switch right about here somewhere. Back there somewhere. And then the motor mount or trans mount up there. And that should be everything to get that free. So let me get to getting with that. So I got my little buggy under here, a little hydraulic floor jack with a milk crate and hopefully it'll work good enough to support that trans going in and out. The only thing holding it is the rear motor mount right now. That looks pretty good. Get that unbolted, we should be able to slide that right out of there. All right, hopefully this comes right out and we don't drop it on the floor. I might have to have you guys move up back a little bit. But let's see how this works. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the shift coupler. I heard the shifter move up, up front. <laughs> Whoops. Alright, see how we do this time. There it goes. Now, if it only go in that easy, it'd be all set. All right, I got them side by side and just looking for any deficiencies or any change in anything. It's called what's called the three rib. So early base is three, then it goes to five. Don't know if there's a four. I know there's a five. Taller gear ratios as you got to the newer buses because they had bigger engines.
We got some new parts for it too. We got a rear trans mount. One of these is the correct one. We gotta go check on the bus. See what's on there. New clutch. Some stuff that we need that we don't have. <laughs> and fluid. Main seal. I think we got a new should have a new clutch cable. I think I asked him to get one. Might be might be that right there. Looks like it was leaking down this side. Pretty wet down below there. Other than that, I don't see too much of an issue. That, you know, popping out of fourth gear is an issue. But all right, let's get reassembling. Let's see if we can fight with that throw out bearing. These are always a little bit of a challenge. I'm trying to get the spring clips to. It's got spring clips on the side, and this has to spring out. And catch around that. I should think I need a regular screwdriver that I don't have with me. Alright. It's got uh, these little spring clips on the side. And they have to be able to hook around the side of the lever. These are usually a tad bit of a pain. You stab yourself in the fingers a few times trying to do it. Side. But generally the first side is the easy side. <laughs> they have another style that the clips are free-floating. Those are really a pain. Stay still. I'm just gonna function check that. Looks good. And I'm gonna put a couple of drops of oil up inside here before I put it together. Just on the pivot points. We can get rid of that. And our next item. Go check the reverse light switch, which is over here. It looks like it took a hit. You can see it's painted black. Let's go see if we can bend them back up. And as long as they stay, don't get damaged, we'll use that switch. We should probably clean them up with a wire wheel. Got a lot of paint on it. Clean those tabs off. Nope. So afraid of. I'm gonna go change it out. Start with the old one first. These just have a button on the back side of them. When you shift the lever into reverse, it pushes the button. And that button is what just makes a contact path. I believe it's ground. I don't think it's power on this side. I think it's ground. I'm not positive of that though. Uh, continues the path. I think I should look that up. Yeah, I think it is, uh, it, it gets power off the coil. Clean fresh one, but I'm not going to use that. I am going to steal the seal off of that one. I'm going to go clean those contacts up before I put it in, though. We'll send that one back to them. They can have their broken switch back. Should have drained the fluid out of this before I took it out. Not that's that big of a deal. It just would have been a little easier. Now we got reverse. And switch them around. Let's go. Let's 
further. We're going to need that bracket. And that rubber boot will come off. That can go on this. Just, that's just a dust cover. And we've got to get this bracket off. Looks like a job for impact. Like that stud on the bottom needs to come out because there's not one on this one. I grabbed the two nuts from the engine when the engine's bolted in. I'm gonna run them in, lock them together, and see if that'll be enough to get it. So now I'm gonna jam them together. Wrong way. I'm gonna try to grab them from the back one. Let's see if the whole thing will spin out. Gonna need some thread locker too. Thread seal, I should say. Here we go. No fluid's gonna piss out. Now I'm going to tighten it from the outside nut. Because you tried the one by the other one, it's just going to back itself off. So. Started first. And I'll just do the same. It's a little bit. Of... Lock me tight on there. I forgot my lock washer. I'm gonna use our friend. Mr. Air. <laughs> All right. See that bracket's not on upside down. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> Whoops. Times. There's just a little left of center. Guys are yelling at me. <laughs> that second one doesn't need to be on there. <laughs> that was in the socket. Snug them up with a wrench and we're good. This thing, this is the bracket for the clutch cable. I call it a preload tube. tube. Uh, it's also called a Bodine. Bodin? Bodine? That's the bracket that holds it. But the tube has a curve to it. It's still under the bus. So it's a plastic and metal tube that comes from the body and it has a zigzag that comes up and then to here 
and it actually puts drag on the clutch cable because the clutch cable it's shaped like an S causes the cable to touch here and then then back here and it just puts a little bit of drag on the ca ca uh, the cable so that have you ever had something that you drove and you're coming off of it and you, as you're trying to come off the clutch you're like you're like bouncing off of it it's not a, a smooth uh, transition you get that bounce to it helps eliminate that helps we want to fill it so we need a 17 mil it's not even tight which probably shouldn't be because let's go check the bottom one though there's a couple of places you could drain them there's one in the back to a small one. All right, we need the tool anyway. You can just make sure that, you see it? Yeah, that one's tight. It holds roughly three quarts of gear oil. I'm gonna fill it now because when it's under the car, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to do. And when these are full, it'll run out the side of the gear case. What I mean by that is when it's in the vehicle and you're filling it up, eventually it's gonna start peeing back out of the hole. And that's how you know it's full. And later on, uh, if you stick your finger in there, if you're able to get like, say the first knuckle you, you, you go down into, you're able to touch the fluid, your level's fine. Well, this is gonna take a while. You don't need to watch this. That was smooth. And now for the little Allen wrench. Don't need to kill it. Good. I'm not sure how well you, me, and the transmission are gonna fit down in there. We'll, we'll attempt it for a little bit. Get it lined up a little better. For an extra person would really be handy. Because getting it on a motor mount is not so much of a big deal, but there's the shift coupler in the back. So you're trying to slide it forward on the motor mount, get the shift coupler on it all at the same time. And sometimes it's easier just to have somebody up front where the shifter is to put it you want to move the shifter forward, moves it backwards. So you can kind of line it up and have the person up front move it. So I'm going to do my best, unless one of you want to go up there and grab that for me, to wiggle all this stuff in there. I guess you're just going to have to take my word for it. All right, so the trains is all back in, clutch cables hooked up. I inspected the cable. I'm going to show you in a second and get this in there. So there's that preload tube I was talking about. And it usually fails right here, right at this bend. The cable will start um, breaking strands off one at a time. Eventually, you adjust the clutch cable. You think the clutch is wearing, but meanwhile, the cable is just getting longer. Pull that back. That looked fine. So we just left that cable in there. Starter's back in. The bushing looks fine. There's a 6-volt and a 12-volt bushing, two different sizes. And what else? We are waiting on this seal. I'm going to go home and see if I have one at home. I was, if not, I'm going to have him go chase one. But that is gone and there's nothing left there for doing anything of any kind of uh, sealing. So that's it for tonight. We'll pick that back up. It'll be a minute for you, but it'll be a day for me. And it's the next day. I found the seal at home. I had one in my stash. More importantly, here's the old trans. And as you can see... There's a little bit of metal coming out of that. It's a good thing we changed it. It had more issues than probably we expected it to. At least it had fluid in it. Well, you take that transmission off, put it in bags, put it away. He's got to go drop that back off as a core. So we're going to start on the engine, getting its issues taken care of. And one of the things I just wanted to talk about before I take it apart, 
The last video I did was the go-kart, the commercial go-kart. And I was talking about free play and the brake pedal. And I also said the clutch and a couple of people asked, what do you mean by I'm a clutch on free play? So this is the fork when you push the pedal down. This is the throw out bearing. This pushes in on the pressure plate, takes these fingers and these fingers hyper extend the opposite direction. The disc behind it now is able to spin free. That's how a clutch works. When you let off the pedal, the fingers come back out and it puts pressure back on the disc and it now locks the disc back to the flywheel and it makes the transmission spin. Well, it uses what's called a throw out bearing. It's a roller bearing. And if you did not have free play, if it was really too much, you'd be pushing in on the clutch and your clutch would actually be slipping because this is still influencing it. Free play is having it so that it is actually off the fingers just a little bit. Because if you have it touching the fingers, that means that bearing is always going to spin. It's never going to stop spinning. I'm always going around. And over time, it'll burn the throw-up bearing out. So the idea is you push the clutch in, the bearing's doing something. Then when you let off the pedal, it stops the bearing from spinning. It makes it last a lot longer. Some people that rest their foot on the clutch can cause them to burn up too. All right, enough of the information. Let's get the uh, clutch off flywheel off and do the rear main seal. Normally on a clutch, what you would do is you would back the screws off evenly and let it come out because you'll see these fingers. When I go to take it off, they're going to start uh, creeping outward as the pressure disappears from it. This is an old clutch. The new one will worry about that, but the old one, we're pretty much just going to buzz off. Last one I'm going to take out is going to be the, the top one. Watch the fingers, you'll see the fingers move. And the last one will fall off. Let's see what we got for wear. Looks, looks pretty easy on this stuff. I wouldn't expect it to be too bad. But considering we're taking it apart, oh, it's down to the rivets. It's touching. It was due, so hopefully it did not kill the flywheel. We got a new pressure plate. Yeah, you can see it was touching there too. Hmm. Looks pretty thick from the side though, I'm surprised. But that rivet, hard to say. I think they're loose. That may have not been just made very well. A little bit of hot spot on it, not terrible. Pressure plate actually looks fairly decent. I think a whole clutch setup is probably about $110 or so. All right, so we gotta get the gland nut off, take the flywheel off. The nut in the center is 36 millimeter. It's actually the same as the uh, hub nut in, this, in the back of VW Beetle rear drums. There's also a bearing inside of here. That yeah, feels good. A couple of screwdrivers, you should be able to walk that off of there and hopefully not drop it off on the floor when you would catch that for me if you did it. Not that I don't trust you. There All right, there's our seal. Yeah, it looks a little wet on the back of the flywheel. And this has shims got shims on the back side you can actually shim the the end plate of the crankcase and I think it's between three and seven thou that you want a little bit of end play and let's just pop that seal out of there it's a regular screwdriver nothing fancy and if you can catch it on a, a dowel it'll push pull off of a dowel
Looks like you can do an oil change too. Here's the shims I was talking about. There should be three of them in here. There you go. And by adjusting those shims is how you would adjust that end play. Yeah, thicker or thinner, it takes up the space. Sometimes the fly will, will get a groove cut in it, especially if it's something that's been leaking real bad. The flywheel, you know, where the seal rides against, will get a groove in it. This one seems to be pretty good. But my point was, if you had a groove, you can influence the seal. You could let it sit a little bit more prouder or sink it in a little bit. This was in just a hair. I just pretty much go flush with them. around the seal. Stick my finger in the air. Oh, just give it a quick, quick little lube. So when the first fire is up, it's not bone dry. There's also the flywheel itself. It has an O-ring. I do not have one. Two O-rings actually. There's one sitting right in the groove right here. I'm gonna give that a quick inspection. Make sure that's okay. Here's where the groove I was telling you about. Sometimes they'll get a groove. If they get a groove cut into them, you can kind of influence where the seal sits a little bit by just jockeying it around. And the gland nut has a seal on it, also an O-ring. looking for flush all the way around. It's pretty even. A little bit more right there. <laughs> Just looking at that O-ring real quick. Make sure there's no tears in it. I believe it comes in an engine gasket set. It looks pretty good. Put that back on. Yes, there's a torque. And it's right about there. <laughs> I'm gonna take some brake clean, clean off this surface, and we'll get the clutch, new clutch back on it. So we'll give that a quick little. What happens is the main seal can leak and where that that rubber get uh, o-ring I was talking about can leak and oil gets onto the clutch and causes the clutch to slip too it's generally got to be pretty bad for that to happen let me go get the rest of our bits and that's the new clutch you can actually see the oil on it I'm gonna make sure you get that off Try working in front of a camera. <laughs> so putting in the new clutch, you just put the disc in there. You can see how much play there is. And you need to make sure that this disc is sitting in the center when you tighten down the pressure plate because you'll never get the engine back onto the transmission. So 
the transmission, this is actually what you're looking like. Sticking out of the transmission is this, the pilot shaft. That goes right into the center. It's got the groove for it. So you could actually use that. And as you can see, now it's dead center. Put the pressure plate back on. I'm going to start all these screws. I'm going to get all them started and bring you back. So they're all started. It's still loose, but so what I do is I kind of watch the fingers in the center and you can, you can crisscross. I just kind of go around and, and tighten up a little bit at a time. You'll see the fingers kind of crawl in. We're gonna go back with a ratchet and just make sure each one is tight. So we know that's in the center, we can get rid of that. And I'm just gonna go run around. I'm gonna kinda go across so I don't turn the engine over. Because if I, if I try doing it like this, I'm gonna turn the motor. But if you go across it, it doesn't wanna turn. You can kinda use it later on for like, say if you wanna ro rotate it around and then get some more. There's a torque form, yes. The torque for everything. But sometimes you get a good feel when you do it a long, long time. Okay. So I spun the engine around and one of the complaints was it had an exhaust leak and we thought it was one of the gaskets down below. But as we later found out, this is the, the preheat. And what that does is it blows exhaust across the bottom of the intake manifold. This is the intake manifold. This is the preheat. So this is coming up from the exhaust. What it does, it blows from one side across to the other and it puts some heat down here because uh, in the winter time, the base of the carb right here will frost over and cause uh, Cause it not to idle, it just runs like crap. It makes the fuel puddle. So they have what's called a preheat on there. Well, that one is rotted out and that's an obvious exhaust leak. Now the, the problem is this is a one year only intake manifold, dual port. And because it's one year only, it makes it a little harder to find. And you gotta kind of tear the engine down to, to fix it. Well, all the externals, I should say. I'm hoping possibly we can patch this. So, and again, what makes it one year only is this bus 71 has power brakes. And so there is an output, right? Where is it? Here's the hose up here. And that comes off the bottom of the intake manifold. It's hard to see back in there, but so that tube runs up and creates vacuum for the, the brake booster and the other cars don't have them. So possibly you could take a piece of pipe. It all depends on how punky this is. I'm gonna go tap on it. We find that the whole thing is junk all the way, then our choice is kind of made for us. If not, uh, possibly we can make a piece of tubing, we'll weld it and do our best to patch around that. You know, Mike does all the VW shows. He's a uh, guy that sells stickers. So he's always at them and he can keep an eye out for the correct intake at some point. Again, it's, not everything's going to get fixed at the same time in it. I can't leave it sit here for three weeks on a lift while we're waiting for parts because I got other stuff I need to do. So people are going to complain that 
why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Do that when you're in there. Well, <laughs> that's why it's got to move along. So let's go tap at this a little bit. Where's my little, where's my little hammer? It's a joke there somewhere. Let's go just kind of give her a couple of knocks. Another thing that happens too is they get plugged. They get plugged up with carbon and air won't blow through it or across it. So I'm going to go hit it with an air gun and make sure that that passage is still good through there. And it, this is generally where it kind of fills up right in here and the same on the other side. Might as well take a peek at the other side real quick. Like fixing something and then looking further down the line and seeing it's got more issues, you know. Let's see if we can cut ourselves back to right about there. And then we'll also have the piece of material to use for sizing up. I'm gonna take an air gun. I'm gonna blow through those passages. I should be able to feel it come out the muffler. And I do. And this side should not be an issue. And that side blows out the muffler. Okay, so the passage is clear. Now we just gotta Fix that boo boo. To the stash pile we go. Not gonna be that easy, is it? It's a little enlarged, so we'll keep that in memory. And we want steel. That's got a little too small. That's a piece of bicycle frame. It's decent, we'll keep that in memory too. Actually, we'll take it right out of the stash. I got a couple of bushings over by the by the lathe. Yeah, I don't see anything more here. I got that piece of jack handle right there. That's almost the same size. I kind of want to sleeve over the top of it. What about that one? It's gonna be the same thing, right? Yeah. Can of bushings over here. Let's go see if any of this stuff is going to play well. Well, this, that's super thick though. Probably. I think all the little pieces generally go to the bottom. Well, something like that. That's the same size. We're going to be going with handlebars. What's that one? That's close. It might be a little, it's not going to be long enough though. So you can slice it down the middle and open it up and then weld across the front of it. And do a little bit more poking. Put a human on the line, would you? Guess not. <laughs> Guess there's no humans. I got I brought this toolbox over. I think this is gonna be all brass. The plumbing stuff. What about that same size?
pretty much gonna be all copper. Bicycle frame it is. All right, I'd say we probably, well first we're gonna go cut that flat. And we'll give her an overlap. We'll give, we could always go cut it smaller, right? So let's go for about that wide and we should probably cut it. Good marker, huh? Under that one. We'll slice it, make two halves out of it and we'll clam shell it together. Let's see if that even puts us in the realm. And which slop do we have? I am going to take and grind. I'm going to grind a sliver away from each side, try to close this up a little bit. And we'll prep all the metal around it. Let's knock off about, about that much should do it. Those clamps kicked up out of our way, give us a little bit more room to get around it. You get the idea. So we get in there, do a little prep. I'm gonna work on that for a little bit. Probably gonna take some sandpaper and wrap it around it and do the old. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah, let's see if a little sandpaper on the back side. Probably works better than the grinder. Get in there. Prep that all up. All right, so let's see what we have going on. Make sure I got the combination right. I think that's it. Suck it down in the middle. <clears throat> Weld up a seam and then we gotta spin it. <clears throat> See where we are. I wanna come in about half inch. So I'm gonna buzz this seam, then I'm gonna spin it around, we'll buzz the other seam, then we'll work on the edges the best we can. 
Watch your eyes. I stuck the clamp to it. <laughs> Come off of there. You know she's a tad warm. The new guy screwing stuff up. Can't take him nowhere. Well, it's better than I thought. There we go. All right, where were we? Need a ground clamp back on. Finish that up, and we'll spin it around. I'll hold that together for a weld or two. Get one tack in the middle, maybe. I guess it's staying right there. <laughs> Move you out of the way, I'm gonna touch that up a little bit more. So I got, this one I got 360 around. This one I got about 80% the way around. I was actually able to come in behind here with a welding gun and, and, and get it. <clears throat> I don't think it'll be much of a leak if it leaks at all, but we'll find out. I'm gonna go clean it up a little.
and a little touch up, a little heat paint, if this will work. Like it never happened. She ain't the prettiest. Throw on the block. She got strong legs. Better than that. Yeah, put that back where it was. These are two separate pieces. These are boots that connect them. They generally stay pretty good unless they get oil soaked. Or super hot. Get in there. The other side has an oil leak. And it's coming from the oil fill. We're going to see if we can tighten that up. So that's the oil fill. You see how it's loose? That's what the issue is. So it's got like a big nut of sorts that's in the center of that. It's just got to cut away on each side. But I don't have anything that fits that. So I'm going to make something that fits that. We're going to go call it that wide. Let's see, get a piece of flat metal and we'll grind it down so it fits into those two tabs. Yeah, well, this works for us. Fine tuned it a little. And she's a bit of a press fit, but. Let's see how that does for us. I would say that's tightened it up. And we'll save that for the magic VW drawer. Tools, I tell you. Hey guys, I'm gonna go pick it up a little bit. I'm gonna go adjust the valves, change the plugs, do some stuff like that, some tune up stuff. Nothing fancy. I'm gonna probably skip over that to move this video along because we still have to get the engine back in and you know, road test and all that kind of happy stuff. So, see you in a minute. All right, I lied. <laughs> number one is tight. So this is number one cylinder and the rotor on the distributor is pointing at number one. This is a sixth valve feeler gauge. Can't get in either one. You gotta wiggle them. This one doesn't even feel like it has any play whatsoever. So it's definitely due. It's pretty much every other oil change. You're supposed to adjust the valves every sixth valve. Far cry from today's cars, you know. If you do it more frequently, you can get away with four. It makes it a little bit quieter. And this is generally the cylinder that doesn't have as much of an issue. Usually it's number three. Opposite, same side, uh, same position, other side. That one might have screwed it up. Tad too loose. Again, too loose essentially just makes it kind of noisy. Doesn't really affect it within reason. Too tight causes it to burn a valve. And we don't want that. Sometimes what it does is it right when you go to tighten it down, it'll turn this. It's trying to do it now. Turn the screw. So you gotta. We'll call that good. I'm not going to show you unless I find something really funky, but I'm going to go do the other three and that's done. Even the valve cover gasket was uh, wasted. That's how it was sitting in there. Yeah, so it's all buttoned up. New plug wires, plugs, 
uh, valves adjusted, valve cover gaskets, new belt. He's gonna have to adjust this. It's kind of like in between the two adjustments. There are shims that you adjust to uh, adjust the tension on it. And you know, again, it's you're you're staggered into how much. If I took one out of it now, it would be too tight. It's a little on the loose side right now, but I want to run it a little bit because if you try to run it on the tight side, you'll end up burn, burning up the bearing in the generator. So after about 500 miles, it's going to need a shim just readjusted. All right, it's got to prep the engine bay. Actually, I got two new motor mounts to go put in here. Let me get those changed out real quick. Nothing wrong with that motor mount. One side was still holding, kind of. We're back in the engine bay, tight quarters. Let's see if we can rip this old gasket out. This is one of those jobs that you stab the underneath of your fingernail <laughs> a couple times. Sometimes once you get it. There we go. That's the easy part. The hard part's putting the new one back in. That was original. So I'm gonna go take a couple minutes, clean up that track, and, and fix some of the dents that are in it, so that we can get the new one in. Two ways to try to install it. One is you can go around and crimp it, kind of try to feed it all the way. The other way is you put a little bit of a taper on, like a leading edge, silicone it, and try to pull from one side of the channel up and around. That's gonna to attempt to do, but all of us aren't gonna fit in there, unfortunately. Some of you guys are a little on the bulky side. 60%, but it doesn't get easier as you go along. Well, she's ready to go back in, but I gotta play musical chairs. Between lowering the bus, getting the engine underneath in the right location, and at some point, once it's low enough, I can get another floor jack under the trans, and I can move the transmission to where I need it, and then try to butt the engine up to it with the motor mounts, sliding up over their brackets, and all that kind of happy stuff. These have been a bit of a pain in the ass for me in the past. <laughs> I may or may not uh, show any of that, but we'll see. And after about 15 20 minutes of jockeying with it it's the bottom two bolts are bolted in and the mounts are in their proper location all the floor jacks are out now we can lift it up in the air and just essentially reattach everything here's the lift setup <laughs> gives us a little bit more elbow room to finish buttoning it up you know that yeah, should be good so we're up underneath. I just get them adjust, adjusted the clutch. And if you actually listen, let me support you a little bit better. As I pull on that, you can actually hear the uh, throwout bearing hitting the back of the pressure plate. So it's probably usually up by the clutch pedal itself. You want about at the pedal, a eh, half inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that. And that probably transfers to, looks like about a quarter inch back here. All right, we should be good enough to run other than a couple of hoses on the back and the rear tin i think we are good to rock and roll Just give me a heads up you see fire or you know any uh fluids hitting the ceiling and other than that let it rip Awesome. 
a lot quieter too. I see a little bit of puffing on the back side of it, but it's just the one area I couldn't get to. Let's get you in the stand. Let's go check out, run it through the gears, and make sure everything shifts like it should. I think it needs a racing stripe right about there. Just so we can see how the drum is spinning. Shall we? clunky going in but the second time I went through it seemed like it was fine we are good to go so on a bus the rear seal part of it is on the car so you cut them back and some of them a bit you go on this piece so I already cut off what was attached to underneath and we just have to do this one kind of the same idea unfortunately goes to goes to dust over time and I'm going to do my best to feed that in there the same as I did on the back half. Did any of that make any sense whatsoever? <laughs> that wasn't exactly the most cohesive explanation now was it? Muffler's right below, below here. The muffler stays in this area, so this area is it's kind of baked. And that's why the seal is there, though, because the seal, you want to keep that hot air from coming up and overheating the engine. So that's why you want to segregate it. How the heat blows out the bottom, it sucks cold air out there from the top. Yeah. And a little spring cleaning afterwards. found a, an extra eight, I should do a bumper first. I found an extra nut and, and stud in a nut. And wandering around trying to figure out, what did I forget? <laughs> it was from the other transmission. When I swapped over the The torque tube for the clutch cable, the bracket that was holding it. <laughs> like, what's off of this that I forgot? That is it. Kitchen closed. All right, I got you kind of propped in the seat, and uh, let's see how we do. going in a second. Yeah, we do. Yeah, the 
It's not like going in a second. First. a little bit too just for the synchros to kind of get lube underneath them and spin up because it was shipped dry. So we're back at the shop. I found if you hold it way over, it'll go in the first and second real easy. If you just try shifting it normal, then it won't go. So that is telling me that we need to move the shifter base on it. And what may have happened, because it was popping out of fourth, we may have influenced it to try to uh, go into fourth a little bit better. And it's opposite of what you think. You think that if you want the shifter to go more this way, you would move the plate over that way. It's opposite. It's got to go that way because it, it extends down through the floor and there's a knuckle that hangs below on a pivot. So let's say this is the pivot point. Shifter's all up above. You're moving the shifter like this and first and second are actually underneath is over on that side. So if you take the plate and you move the plate over that way, it influences how much closer it gets to first and second. Let's get that floor mat up. Get those bolts loose. See if we can uh, push it over a little. It's going to be great for you guys to see. You can see the two bolts right there, right there. I can't get the mat all the way off because Mike's got some stuff added on here that's making it a little difficult to get out of there and I don't want to tear it. get a, a rod and see if we can tap that over a little bit. Yeah, buses are not exactly the uh, the best at shifting. They got six foot of shift rod underneath too. I think that moved a little. Let me see if we tighten that up. Get a little feel, see how it is. I mean, worst case, you can live with it the way it is. You just got to know how to pull over to the side, but I'm not happy with leaving it like that. So, hopefully, this fixes it. Might as well give her a quick inspect, make sure everything's doing okay. That air clearing clamp can go down a little, sitting up a little high. I don't see any drips on the floor. That's good.
Well guys, that's it. It seems like it's working okay. Uh, you don't have to hold it hard over to the left to get first and second anymore, it kind of pops right in. And you don't have to hold it in fourth gear <laughs> from it popping out. So Mike should be happy with that. He's got a couple things to go chase yet. That intake manifold, CV joint on the one side is torn. And if he does seem like he has any more shifting problems, we should probably do a coupler. And there's actually some bushings in the front that you could change out too to uh, get rid of some of the slop. But with that, I think uh, Mr. Bus should be happy. Camper? I don't know if that's appropriate. It's not a camper. Anyway, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Guys, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for so much uh, hanging out with me and uh, doing some wrenching in the garage. Later.